Please raise your right hand. Do you swear that the testimony that you are about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you. Let the record show that the witness answered in the affirmative. Facebook founder and CEO Mark Zuckerberg was grilled on Capitol Hill Wednesday in his first testimony to Congress since April 2018. Are users actually safe? Is Facebook being safe? Senator, I think Facebook is safe. I use it and my family use it and all the people I love and care about use it all the time. talking about the Mark Zuckerberg testimony, the Sundar Pichai testimony, and the Jack Dorsey testimony. What happened in those events, and I'm going to be in addressing the increasing privacy concerns, and we'll also be talking about the power that social media companies hold and the impact of social media. To understand this issue, we must start at the core of the problem. Why do companies collect data? To understand that, you must first understand that social media companies love ads. It's the way that they make money. But you know what they love more than ads? Targeted ads. Targeted ads are ads that are targeted at specific people who are more likely to click on that ad. But for targeted ad, they, the companies need to know who to target. That is why they collect personal data. They track every move. And they are stored as web cookies. You may have seen many pop-ups saying, we use cookies, and you may not know what it is. That means they collect data, and they're asking for your permission to do so. All of this is embedded deep within the depths of the privacy policies of these companies. That is why you don't know about them. Almost nobody reads the privacy policies. Let's be honest. Even I am guilty of not properly reading the privacy policies. But sometimes the companies use the data for something that is not intended for. They sell it to other people and, and use it for other things, for other methods that are not mentioned in the privacy policy. And that is where the problems start. We're going to be talking about the Mark Zuckerberg testimony and what happened in the Mark Zuckerberg testimony. Now, Mark Zuckerberg was questioned. Uh, if you take all the time of the questioning, he was questioned for uh, over two days, 10 and 10 hours. He was asked over 600 questions. What was this for? This was because Facebook was doing a lot of sketchy things, a lot of things that they didn't disclose. It all started as all stemmed from the Cambridge Analytica scandal. And he faced over 600 questions, 600, mil, uh, 600 questions. Uh, so, 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 uh, so, what is happening? Cambridge Analytica improperly harvested the data of over 87 million Facebook users. Uh, so th th that's why this happened. Basically, it happened around April 2018. I'm pretty late to this, but the ramifications of what happened that uh, that day on Capitol Hill is still felt today. Uh, and he was on an up all uh, on what the New York Times calls an apology tour, uh, going to the uh, best lawmakers of the U.S. Uh, uh, apologizing to them, basically trying to impress them, and he would he would go on to face those lawmakers in Capitol Hill. Um, so yeah, so it was all about privacy and the way that uh, Facebook harvested data and what they used that data for. So it was like a, a huge session. It was all about like a lot of the senators just questioned Mark Zuckerberg on what happened. So what, is, what are the ramifications of what happened and how is it still being felt today? Now, uh, now that was a very important point for us because then Facebook promised that it'll be more careful with its um, uh, with what it's doing with its data because it wields so much power uh, and data and Facebook promised that it would use it for good uh, and would implement better policies. Uh, which, believe it or not, uh, you can believe or not, it, it depends. But 
it was a huge event and similar things have happened to other uh, companies such as Twitter and Google in which uh, Jack Dorsey and uh, Sundar Pichai, the, their respective CEOs, were questioned. Now on to the case of Jack Dorsey. Now um, Jack Dorsey was very cool uh, before Congress. He kept, he kept his cool. It, the interrogation started at 9.30 a.m. and it began with the Senate Intelligence Committee. And so you may be uh, wondering why was he interrogated? He was interrogated because the uh, because Donald Trump and other re Republicans, prominent Republicans, accused Jack Dorsey and Twitter of uh, political bias and he was uh, apart from political bias he was uh, questioned on a ver variety of issues such as uh, hate speed uh, and so on and so yeah and he also had a huge a very long questioning uh, uh, like Mark Zuckerberg and uh, Sundar Pichai mm -hmm. and um, he was all he was uh, he was interviewed as an in interrogated with uh, Sheryl Sandberg, uh, who was Facebook's uh, chief operating officer, um, and then after the intelligence committee, he was presented before the f uh, 54 member House Energy and Commerce Committee. Uh, so there's not a lot of information on Jack Dorsey's uh, testimony as much as as much as there is uh, to Sundar Pichai's testimony or um, or Mark Zuckerberg's testimony. There wasn't there isn't much information on it. So as far as I can dig up. It was not over privacy concerns, it was more over political bias and the way that uh, Twitter has been used for bad and what Twitter is doing to combat it and so on. Jack Dorsey also had a pre-written testimony um, that is all about all the in information I can uh, dig up unfortunately. Now to Sundar Pichai's testimony. Now Sundar Pichai's testimony was about a lot of things. It was spread out over a lot of topics. Now what were the main topics? One of the main topics that were, were was going around was uh, Sundar Pichai uh, on Google developing a search product for China, as in Google search for China, that could be used to censor um, uh, articles and it's just used for general censorship and. So there was a lot of talk on that, and and a lot of them, a lot of uh, no, Sundar Pichai was asked a lot about that, and he kept on reply, he kept on replying, with the fact that it was an internal effort, and they haven't collaborated yet with the Chinese government. They basically like ran sort of a simulation of what it would look like, but they haven't done any efforts because it didn't line up with Google's core principles of free speech, uh, and. Um, there was also uh, mainly there was a lot of that talk going around, and a congressman known as Mr. Liu supported Sundar Pichai, and and there were a lot of um, uh, questions around e Google search preferring to show liberal uh, uh, preferring to show liberals in good uh, light and Republicans in bad right, uh, I mean in a bad light, and and they blamed Google for that, and then Mr. Liu came up in support. Of uh, Google because it, there it's all just algorithms and uh, and a congressman asked the question of whether if he moves from a place to another will Google know so no 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 uh, there was there was a lot of questions around that and uh, other things so it was uh, it was a, a very huge questioning that led to a lot of uh, information being revealed it was it was pretty great it was it was a um, it, it was a pretty um, important hearing. And but and I, I and the way that Sunjo Pichai conducted himself, it um, it sort of helped the congressmen and women um, understand, I guess, and it sort of wiped Google's name and record clear, which is great. So that's it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did. Please be sure to hit that like button. Please be sure to subscribe because I poured a lot of work into this. Uh, over two days of work went into this. And I hope you enjoyed my video. And my book is ready, by the way. It's published and there's a link below in the description on Amazon and Flipkart link where you can go and check it out. Thank you for watching and bye.